Hello, everybody. I'm Andrei, and I work for JetBrains as a Senior Vice President of Investments, Research, and Education. Welcome to Regionals. Great things happen when great minds come together. JetBrains wants to seek out great minds all across the globe, support the initiatives, and work together to create great things that will make the world a better place. That's why JetBrains is proud to be a global tool sponsor of the ICPC. There are already many great minds working at JetBrains, and together we have created some amazing things, like the Kotlin programming language, for example. It keeps on growing and growing in popularity. In 2017, Google began officially supporting Kotlin as a language for writing Android applications. We have also created professional development tools like Celine for C++ programmers, IntelliJ IDEA for Java, PyCharm for Python, and also educational tools that help people learn and teach programming. The regionals are the biggest contest in the ICPC calendar. Thousands of talented people all over the world team up to solve complex real-world challenges. These contests are the proving ground for future champions. But even if you don't make it through to the finals, the experience of competing in the regionals and the new friends you'll make along the way are priceless. Enjoy the ride. Best of luck to everyone. So the next problem is uh, Blizzard Blitz. And uh, there are only 12 accepted submissions for this QND contest. Uh, it will be explained at its author and explanation, but uh, we'll begin the game. Okay, so yeah, Kevin, you can start. We can hear. You. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. I'm here to explain these bits. So it's a problem on a grid where each cell is either ice or snow. And on ice cells, you slide. And on snow cells, you stand on. So the problem is you want to visit a, a particular cell, IJ, on step K. And, uh, no, and you want to find out the number of distinct paths such that that is true. So the first insight here is that the grid is actually very regular. In fact, there aren't any obstacles, so the number of uh, choices you have at any point is actually fixed. All four availables are always all four directions are always available. Actually, after the first step, only three are available because uh, only three are available because you cannot go opposite to the previous direction. So, all in all, from any starting position, there. There, there are exactly four times three to the n minus one possible paths. Okay, next slide, please. So, so the idea is we want to find the number of paths that go through ij at step k. But as we have seen earlier, we have, you always have four available directions or three after the first step. The idea is to reverse engineer the starting position. Since we know that we will visit the cell ij at step k, we, we know where we probably are or where, where the, our vicinity will be around step K. And we just reverse engineer to find the starting path. We don't actually do the reverse engineering. We just know that it can be done in most cases. And we probably should intuit that for every sequence of directions, there's probably only one starting position. Because as I said, there aren't any obstacles in the grid and all the steps are reversible. Okay, so what I said, there's only one starting position from every for every direction sequence. That's not exactly true because there are some edge cases that we need to handle. So next slide, please. So the first cell is, uh, so let's consider the case if ij is ice. If ij is ice, then you can only slide through it. And that means you have to slide through it in between two snow cells. So of course, there are still four directions on how you do it, and they can be classified into two types, vertical or horizontal. But those are not necessarily possible. For example, if ij 
For example, if the column of IJ does not have any snow cells, then you cannot slide through it in a vertical manner. And similarly, if the row doesn't have any snow cell, you cannot go through it uh, in a horizontal manner. But other than that, there are actually no more restrictions. So there are two ways to go vertical, two ways to go horizontal, and that fixes the direction of step K. Everything else can be chosen arbitrarily as long as we don't choose two opposite directions consecutively. So therefore, there will be three raised to n minus one choices. And the answer will be three raised to n minus one times this conditional factor. So if vertical is possible, we add two, otherwise we don't add anything. And the same with horizontal. So that handles the case where ij is ice. So next slide, please. So the second case is when it is snow. The, this case is very similar, except we don't have to worry about column i and j having a snow cell because ij is a snow cell itself. However, there's a different issue because based on the definition of step k, some cells may be visited on two consecutive steps at the same time, in particular, if it is an endpoint. So in this case, ij can be an endpoint. So there are additional paths aside from the normal path where you, you end on step on ij, at, where you end on cell ij at step k, but not begin there. So we, we need to include those paths as well. And that can only happen uh, if there's another snow cell where you can come from or you're, uh, to do that uh, path. So it can happen, for example, horizontally if there's another snow cell at that column and similarly for horizontal. But other than that, just as in the previous case, there are still two times three raised to n minus one possibilities. So the formula is very similar, except now we add a four because that counts the paths where you start at end at, at cell ij on step k. So the, the idea behind this problem is that the grid doesn't have actually any obstacles. So you're basically doing some specialized counting around step k, and that's basically all your uh, constraints. So yeah, that's the solution. Each query can be answered in log n time. All right.